Okay, gang, so now we're going to start looking at our final two types of fungus. The first of those is the Ascomycota. Now, Ascomycota, there's a lot of them out there, and they're what we call sac fungi. And it sounds a little funny, but the reason why we call that is because the sac-like cup that they tend to form uh, whenever they're in the reproductive stage. Um, so a lot of these, these, these sac, these sac uh, uh, structures on them store a lot of fungi. It's kind of like how we see a normal mushroom, but it's flipped upside down. It's got the cup part facing up. So we call them cup fungi, and we call them sac fungi. Uh, but one of the neat things about them is one of the best types of fungus out there, yeast, is found in Ascomycota. And uh, yeast, as we know, is used not only to, to make bread, but also to make beer and other types of alcohol. So that's why it's so wonderful. Um, these are, are single-celled yeast are, but also these can be multicellular, like uh, truffles and morels, which are delicious to eat. Um, these can reproduce sexually, or they can reproduce asexually. Um, so, you know, they're going to they're gonna do it whichever way they want to. But the reason why this is so important for us is because we use this for a lot of different things. Uh, we can eat truffles and morels. Um, they're delicious. Uh, yeast makes wine beer, and it causes bread bread to rise. So that's definitely a, a huge staple of the uh, of our diet. Uh, soy sauce and soft drinks are made from different types of, of ascomycotas. Penicillin and uh, anti -or organ rejection medication, uh, a cholesterol lowering medication, uh, meds uh, of, of all different types are made from um, uh, these types of ascomycota. Uh, natural herbicides and natural pesticides are all made from this. So there's tons of things out there that our, our, our ascomycotas are, are used for. And again, ascomycotas, they're, they're called uh, uh, sac fungi because of the way that, that uh, these kind of like cup areas in them uh, form. And same thing over here. If you've never had a chocolate-covered truffle, not the named candy, but the actual mushroom covered with chocolate, they're actually really good. Really earthy tasting, but they're actually really good. And when you get old enough to drink beer and eat bread, you'll understand just how wonderful um, a little bit of yeast in a fermentation tube can be. And so our last type of fungus is called the basidium mycota. Now, this is the easy one. This is the one that you think of when you think mushroom, right? This is your typical mushroom-shaped fungus, over 26,000 species. Um, all of these are multicellular, and almost all of them reproduce sexually, except for a very few. Um, most of these are going to be decomposers. Some are parasitic, not only to animals and plants, but to also to other types of fungus as well. Um, for example, there's a single mushroom in, that's a type of honeydew mushroom, just one individual that lives in Oregon that covers over 2,300 square acres. That's huge, and it's over 2,400 years old. Amazing, right? Uh, this one fungus has killed the trees that are in this pick. So you see this area in here? This is a big area in Oregon where just a bunch of dead trees. How do they find this or turn, determine that this was a fungus? Well, scientists started studying, hey, there's this wilderness full of trees, but in the middle of it, there's this dead area. And anytime new trees start to grow, they kind of quickly die. And a lot of old trees are dying. But not only that, as the years go by, the perimeter is expanding. Uh, the, this area of dead trees is getting larger, and they're recording trees around the perimeter that are, are starting to die. So they start thinking, well, maybe it's something in the in the soil or something in the air. So they started testing, and they found out, well, in the soil, they didn't really find anything that could be killing it. But then somebody says, hey, well, let's look and see if there's any fungus in there. Let's see exactly what's in there. And they said, hey, there's in each of the samples we've taken all over this 2,300-square-acre-plus area, um, there's a type of fungus it's like a honey, a honey fungus. And they did a genetic analysis and realized it's the same individual. So what happened is that 2,400 years ago plus, uh, there was a little spore that landed in the ground, and it started to grow out in a circle. And it has not stopped. It has kept growing. It's been able to keep going and reproducing uh, uh, sexually and uh, um, uh, asexually if it can. And, and move out and spread out. And as it does, it just kills trees. It's a parasite. And as the trees fall over, it's just more food for it to break down. New trees start to grow, kill those two. Um, and as it starts to uh, grow, it just pushes out and kills more trees. And it's, yeah, yeah, it's, that's, it's amazing. It's hard to think of, but that's one fungus. There's actually a, um, 
uh, episode of X Files that's based off of this. Go back and watch it. Um, shelf fungus, which we see all the time uh, here in Mississippi, out in the woods on fallen logs, even on still some living trees. This is also a, um, a Basidium mycota. Uh, it's a parasite, though, and it actually possesses the ability to break down lignin, which is a chemical in wood that makes wood wood. And it is extremely, extremely difficult to break down. It, it is the reason why we don't go out and eat trees. We can't break down wood. I mean, we use trees for building materials uh, because they're so resistant to breaking down. And these guys just eat it right on up. But don't worry, there's another type of fungus called the jelly fungus, which is also a parasite. And it doesn't, it, it grows on, the, it looks like it's kind of growing on the same area where the shelf fungus is. But one of the things is that it's not eating the tree. It's a parasite on the shelf fungus. So if you ever see shelf fungus growing and you see a jelly fungus, like here's some jelly fungi over here. I actually took this picture here in the woods uh, of Mississippi. Um, uh, this is actually eating other types of fungus and shelf fungus that are growing in this limb. So, you know, Basidia mycota are you know, pretty daggum cool. So continuing on with those Basidia mycotas, looking at the club fungi, um, uh, clump fungi are generally, because those are the ones we eat a lot of, um, they can, there's some that can be very, very toxic and very poisonous to us. Um, there's one in particular called a deadly knife cap. There's many different species. There's some in Europe and there's some here in the States. Um, they, at a young stage, they look like a poofball mushroom. Poofball mushrooms are the kind of mushrooms you eat like when you go to Chinese food uh, places. Which one of these is the poofball mushroom? It's really hard to tell. This one looks a little different, but it's also grown a little bit more, whereas these are a little bit smaller. It's really hard to tell which one's the poofball mushroom and which one's the deli nightshade, because, excuse me, not deli nightshade, but the deli uh, nightcap. Um, they all look extremely alike at each other. So that's why when people say, hey, I'm going shrooming, and I'm going to go pick shrooms out of cow manure here in Mississippi, it's not a good idea to do that, because the shroom that they're looking for is almost indistinguishable from a, a version of a mushroom that is actually extremely uh, lethal to humans. Uh, and only genetically can you tell the difference between them. So it's not a good idea to go and do that. Um, some, flung, uh, some types of, uh, of fungi, I think most people know, uh, produce a, a psilocybin and a, another, uh, another a chemical called LSD. And those are mood-altering uh, drugs, and they can cause hallucinations. And that's what people take to make them go on acid trips. So when you see, like, Alice in Wonderland and she's eating the sides of the mushroom, um, she's not stepping through a... Uh, um, She's not stepping through the looking glass. Uh, she's having an acid trip, and uh, uh, she thinks she's doing things, but she's not. She's talking to caterpillars, singing with the flowers. No, 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 no. She needs to um, go sober up because uh, she's, uh, she's acting a little crazy uh, because she ate a bad mushroom, or she ate a really good mushroom. depends on how you look at it. So the last thing we'll talk about are some different partnerships and types of parasites that fungus can um, uh, make with us. So some different types of partnerships. So lichen is a blue-green algae and a fungus growing together. One produces water, the other produces glucose, and they share that with each other, and that's what this is. And lichen grows on trees all over the place. The mycorrhizae, the roots that, um, and, and fungal relationships that help these trees and, and other types of plants grow. So we have uh, fungal, uh, fungal farming ants. They're also called, known as leafcutter ants. Leafcutter ants actually don't eat leaves. They collect the leaves, bring them down into the anthill, and use the leaves to grow a fungus. The fungus then, um, uh, they actually then it will eat the fungus. So those are all different types of partnerships that we see. Uh, some plant pathogens, for, for starters, the, um, uh, uh, the Irish potato famine that killed millions of people. Um, it, it was based on a couple of different things, a, a couple of different types of rots, uh, but also different, different types of fungal infections. And the bad thing there is that there is only one species of potato planted all throughout um, uh, Ireland. And so when that one species was susceptible to, to this disease, it really played a, a huge, uh, made a huge impact. It killed people from starvation, but also economic collapse occurred. And a lot of people left Ireland during this time because they couldn't sustain themselves. And one of the places they came was America. And, it, you know, there's this whole episode uh, uh, of our history where most people in America could not stand the Irish because the Irish are floating over here in boats and taking up all the jobs. Um, kind of like it resembles what's going on today with the, uh, the immigration laws uh, in this country, and especially to do with uh, Mexican immigration. 
Um, people come here for jobs and opportunities because they lack them other places. We've seen this before in our history. Uh, this happened to be caused by a, a fungal pathogen. Um, the Salem witch trials were actually attributed to LSD uh, producing fungus that grew in the wheat. It's called wheat rots. Here's some wheat. Here's these little areas that uh, look deformed. This is a fungus growing in there. And this, some of these fungus produce psilocybin or they produce LSD. People didn't know that. So they made bread out of it. And they ate the bread. Next thing you know, they're tripping, thinking, hey, that woman, I, I got cold and this woman over there looked at me. So obviously she's a witch burner. Um, sounds really stupid when you say it like that, but you know, they didn't call it the Dark Ages because there wasn't a lot of light. Um, another thing is the uh, American, Dutch elm, uh, American Dutch elm disease and the chestnut blights. So uh, a huge percentage of the American forest, like over, percent, over 40 percent of our forest, used to be made up of elm trees. And over the last hundred years, they've all died. Because um, over in Europe, they have a... a, a a fungus that exists out in their forest that has evolved there. So all the trees have, have built a resistance to it. A beetle was in a tree, had the fungus on it. The beetle got into some cargo containers and came over to the, ended up coming over to the U.S. where it flew out and went to some trees and brought the spores with it. Those spores infected elms and killed them. They had no resistance to it because they didn't evolve with it. And that spread across the country. Um, we actually used to have uh, the only elm tree in Mississippi was actually on USM's campus. And in 2013, when the tornado went through USM's campus, it knocked down and killed the elm tree. And so we no longer have any elm trees at all in Mississippi, unless there's some unregistered ones in, in places that we don't know about. But for the most part, they're all gone. They're, they're pretty much an extinct species now. Uh, uh, we still have a lot of furniture, especially antique furniture that's made from elm. That actually, it's selling at higher and higher prices. It's kept in good conditions because elm is, is a extinct species of wood that we don't we no longer have. Um, and also the chestnut blight. Uh, chestnut blights grow on trees, and it gets, it, calls, it does what we call girdling the tree. It grows all the way around the bark and kills the bark all the way around. Well, once all that's dead, that's the xylem and phloem that's in the plant. So water can no longer go up to the leaves from the roots, and, water, and, and glucose can no longer go from the leaves down to the roots. So it, it girdles the tree, and it kills it. And, it, you know, what are you going to cook, you know, o over um, an open fire uh, at Christmas time? You're not going to cook, you know, you're not going to roast chestnuts because we don't have any because the trees are all dying off. And lastly, uh, we have some animal pathogens. Uh, yeast infections, which can occur in females or reproductive uh, areas, um, unless they keep, you know, pretty good hygiene. You can get yeast infections, use that monostat five or six or seven or whatever is out now and kick that back. But you can also get it in other areas of your body. And guys can get it too. I know you can get it in your throat if you're not careful. Uh, so be careful of those yeast infections, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's 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 a, it's a species of yeast uh, that just takes over and 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 gets in those areas and grows, and it's 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 uncomfortable. And also a big one I think a lot of people understand is athlete's foot, especially down here in the south, where you know it's wet every day. You're you're running around doing stuff. Your feet stay moist, and and if you don't take good care of yourself, sometimes you get fungus in there, and they'll start to grow. And it's a burning, itching sensation. Now this is a pretty bad case of it. Um, and this is probably like, you know, somebody that, like an elderly person maybe that never really took their foot off, or if their foot off, took their socks off for a while, or living in a home and maybe got neglected a little bit. This is a pretty bad case. But again, it's a fungus. They grow what they eat, they eat what they grow on. So this guy is literally eating away at the skin of the foot. And all of the, this is, is, is stuff that's common that, that has affected us uh, socially. It's affected us for historically. It's affected us economically. Um, it's, it's changed the ecosystem. It's changed the economics um, uh, in big parts of our history and some cool things also in there. So, I mean, fungus do a lot of cool different things around us and for us and against us. And hopefully you can now better appreciate all that fungus uh, uh, do. And so I wish you the best, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye.